Then you'll turn around, slow the airplane down, extend the landing gear on the wing flaps, and come on in for a... 88. ...an approach that has uh, 200 knots. And you see by galaxy. Now, after coming overhead at a speed of about 200, 220 knots, about 250 miles an hour, power comes off, you heard the engine spinning down a little bit. They'll slow the airplane down and begin to configure for landing. You're going to see big panels come down the trailing edge of the wing. Those are called wing flaps, and they change the shape of the wing that the wind sees. Five Galaxy. And what I want you to watch for when you hear the power come up to go around, fly away off of their low approach, I want you to watch those main landing gear because they're gonna retract straight up into the body of the C-5. But before they do that, they're gonna rotate 90 degrees. You're gonna see all four of these trucks of wheels rotating 90 degrees before they're retracted into the belly of the C-5 Galaxy. Things to watch for as they come by on their low approach as if they were going to land in the C-5 Galaxy. But then you hear the engine spin up all 168,000 pounds of thrust. We'll lift the C-5 away from us. You'll see the gear retracted, the wing flaps retracted, and away they go. On the right, the C-5 Galaxy. here in the crowd were probably watching to see if the airplane was going to sink a little bit as the wing flaps were retracted. Not a bit, because that aircraft is being flown very, very capably by a crew of the 439. Pilot in command, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Lodra, 6,000 hour pilot from Chicopee, Massachusetts. In the right seat, Lieutenant Colonel Craig Tomalo with over 8,000 hours. He's from Belcher Tower. Also flying along, a third pilot is Captain Adam Rockhill. The 2,000 hour is a new guy from living in New Hampshire. Flight engineer is Chief Master Sergeant Glenn Flynn with over 11,000 hours east of Westfield Pass. Master Sergeant Ben Sederin, another flight engineer with 11,000 hours from Chicopee. Instead of all that thrust going out the back and pushing the airplane along, we're going to deflect some of that air forward and use that reverse thrust to slow the airplane down. It looks like they've retracted all that. We're going to make a low pass down the runway, accelerating for you in the C5. Okay, our C-5 is now in a clean configuration once again. On a part of the traffic pattern, we call the downwind portion. Racetrack patterns are very common, and universally used at all airports around the world. And you saw him come down the runway, he made a 90 degree left-hand turn, and he made another 90 degree left-hand turn, so this is left traffic, and it's in a racetrack pattern. Right now he's on the downwind, parallel to the landing runway, because the idea is you're supposed to land into the wind because it slows down your speed over the ground so that you touch down at the lowest possible speed. 
And uh, in the airline I used to fly for, as a young guy, I asked this captain who had over 30,000 flying hours. I said, is there anything that you haven't done in aviation, something you want to do before you retire? He says, as a matter of fact, there is. Before I retire, I want to land into the wind. Never happens, folks. There's always a wind blowing across the runway. Trying to confuse things, because you're lined up with the runway, but guess what? The wind is drifting you off to the side. So you have to do a little bit of maneuvering in order to stay lined up and track down the center line of the runway and touch down. We're going to listen to the sound of the engines. As he touches down, we're going to go back to the Then you may hear the sound of the engines change again as he applies reverse thrust. It helps slow the airplane down. Let's watch. C5 on final for touchdown. There's the reverse thrust, and if you look at the engines, you can see that black stripe around the nacelle. That's where the air was coming out. They'll retract that as they taxi back to their parking area. You'll see that those engine nacelles, the round cans, will not look the same as they do right now in full reverse. Some of you C5 pilots in the crowd may have noticed that when he applied that reverse thrust, the nose wanted to pitch just a little bit. There you see a good picture of those wing flaps hanging down the trailing edge of the wing. 90% of that comes off the fan, ducted around that big can that surrounds the fan. That jet, jet, jet engine is there to drive that fan and produce all that 42,000 pounds of thrust at takeoff. You get it up to altitude, the jet becomes very, very efficient. in driving that big fan. As they taxi by, I suspect you're probably gonna get uh, somebody opening up the hatch on the top of the cockpit, probably put the American flag out there. That's what they did yesterday. And you get a good look at this giant airplane as they taxi by. The C-5 Galaxy of the 439th Airlift Wing, Westover Air Reserve Base. There's the flag. Looks like the leading edge of the wing is kind of good down. Well, that's another way of changing the curved shape of the wing. Got a bigger, why do we want to create all that work? Well, the wind plane can weigh 840,000 pounds of good luck. So we need a little help 